Good afternoon, everyone. This is Anmol Pawar from D.M. Patel College of Nursing, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Mental Health Nursing. Today, we are here to see a sweet and short topic from the subject of psychiatry, and the topic is nothing but the schizophrenia. As we have come across to n number of psychiatric diseases, n number of psychiatric disorders, but the commonest the commonest disorder from the psychiatric is nothing but the schizophrenia which we are going to see in detail in today's session. So we will just begin as we know uh, first of all the introductory part here we can see the uh, schizophrenia the word schizophrenia was been first coined in the year 1908 and it was been coined by the Swiss psychiatrist the name is nothing but the Iguan Bluer. So what this Iguan Bluer he has done, he has split this schizophrenia into the two words. That is nothing but we, uh, we can say schizo and friend. Okay. So schizo means nothing but split and friend, here we can say friend is related to the mind. And this we combine this schizo and friend together, the word was coined as a schizophrenia which was been discovered by the Iguan Bluer and this word schizophrenia is derived from the Greek word. Moving towards the next, here we can see the certain classifications which are being given as per the ICD-10. So these classifications are being categorized into the following which is nothing but the F20 to F29. So here we can see uh, schizophrenia, schizotypal and certain delusional disorders. Here we can see F20 it is pure pure schizophrenia. Later on we can see F20 is nothing but paranoid schizophrenia. Next one, hebephrenic, catatonic, undifferentiated, post-schizophrenic depression, residual schizophrenia, simple schizophrenia and schizotypal disorders. So what actually these all mean, we will see in detail step by step. Before going ahead, we will uh, see the definition of schizophrenia, what it says. So definition of schizophrenia it says it is a character, it is a psychotic condition which is characterized by disturbances in thinking, emotions, volitions and faculties in the presence of fear consciousness which leads to socially withdrawal. Now what does this definition says? So if we see the description of this definition they says schizophrenia is a psychotic condition. Now what is this psychotic condition? Psychotic condition means here we can say the patients are living in the world of fantasy or we can say the patients are living in the world of uh, they are daydreaming or delusional activities they are performing. Along with this psychotic conditions they are having certain disturbances in their cognitive functions. Which are those cognitive functions? Here we can say disturbances in their first one is thinking. The psychiatric patients, especially the schizophrenic patients, if you go and observe the schizophrenic patient, there you will come to know their cognitive skills are not functioning well as we and you how we are functioning. The thinking capacity is being totally disturbed. Then emotions. Emotions, here we can say their affect is being not matching towards their emotional activities. We can say there will be a blunt emotion or we can say there will be a totally opposite reaction towards the emotions. What are those we will see in the further. Then we can see here uh, volitions have been also disturbed but how the patient is? The schizophrenic patient here we have seen it. they are having certain psychotic conditions. We have seen there are uh, having certain disturbances in their cognitive skills that is thinking, their emotions. Okay, These are all are being disturbed. But how the patient is? Patient is fully conscious. Patient is having clear consciousness. Though the patient is clear conscious, but it usually leads to social withdrawal. Based on these all uh, complaints, based on these all symptoms like disturbances in thinking, emotions, volitions, though the patient is conscious, but here the patient is totally isolated. He himself is getting isolated from the entire community, from the entire society. Why? Because of his own uh, knowingly uh, disturbances of his thinking. Fine. 
So here we can see us see, uh, the pictures of certain psychotic conditions, how the patients are living in the world of fantasy, how they are daydreamers. Then here we can see certain disturbances in thinking. The patient is not able to think logically. The, yes, for, for example, if we if, if I ask you certain questions, okay, so that question you will grasp and according to the grasping power you will start thinking on the question. Yes. Mr. Anmol Kaur has asked me certain questions. So what will be the answer? You will start thinking. But here in psychiatric patients, the schizophrenic patients, their total thinking capacity has been totally disturbed. Then volitions, yes, whether to do or not to do. Totally confused, totally confused. Then disturbed emotions, okay. Within a fraction of like, for example, now the patient is calm and quiet. Within a fraction of second, we cannot say, okay, he has been disturbed now. Okay, he is having certain violent behavior. In the uh, other aspects, we can see the patient is crying. His mood is upset. The emotions are totally blunt. Okay, ab abnormal emotions. Then we will moving towards the epidemiology. Epidemiology here. This schizophrenia is a very common disorder in among all psychiatric diseases. Schizophrenia is very much common. Then prevalent in all cultures across all the world. We cannot say like yes, Papa, this schizophrenia is only uh, more prevalent into the abroad, into the Gulf or into the Indian peoples. No, it is being distributed among all the world, across the world. It is, you can see each and every schizophrenic patient in certain psychiatric hospitals. Then about 50% of new admissions into the psychiatric hospital, you will see a schizophrenic patient will be lying on in some, in some or other bed. Then equally distributed among both the genders. We cannot say like schizophrenia is more common into the males or schizophrenia is more common into the women. No, it is being equally distributed among both the genders. But they, it, it, it has certain uh, years or we can say up to the certain age, here we can say 15 to 25 years for men. Like for males, the age categorized it has we can see 15 to 25 of the male, 15 to 25 years of men will be suffer, they are at high risk to have schizophrenia and for women we can say 25 to 35 years of females are at high risk to have this schizophrenic disorder. Now moving towards the causes, the ideological factors. What is the actual cause of being having such schizophrenic disorder? So the first and most important ideological factor is the biochemical theories. Now what are these biochemical theories? Here we can see it includes biochemical, neurostructural, genetic, prenatal risk factors and other theories. So what are those? We will see one by one. Now here related to biochemical theories. Biochemical is somewhat related to neurotransmitter abnormalities or we can say certain ups and downs or we can say the another word is fluctuation in between the neurotransmitters. The responsible neurotransmitter for schizophrenic disorder is the dopamine. This dopamine neurotransmitter, the level of dopamine is being increased that's why the patient is suffering from this schizophrenia. There are, uh, there are some more biochemical, uh, like we can say certain abnormalities into the norepinephrine, into the serotonin, acetylcholine and gamma aminobutyric acids. Also prostaglandins and endorphins. Here we can say these all neurotransmitters like norepinephrine, serotonin, GABA, prostaglandins and endorphins, these are abnormal. We cannot say yes, these are increased or decreased. These are abnormal. But the responsible neurotransmitter for, uh, sorry, the responsible neurotransmitter for schizophrenia is nothing but the dopamine. This is the most and important etiological factor where we can say the biochemical locha, we can say in another words, the biochemical locha is nothing but the dopamine hypothesis where the dopamine level is being exceeded. Then moving towards the neurostructural theories. If you, if we see the CT scan and MRIs of the patients, those who are suffering from schizophrenia, there we will come to know that the, there will be a decreased brain volume. Okay. 
Before that, here we can say the prefrontal cortex and limbic cortex are not yet fully developed. In whom? In the patients, those who are suffering from the schizophrenia. And if you go and see to the MRIs and CT scans, there we can say the brain volume has been decreased. There will be a larger lateral third ventricles. We will be also able to find that there will be atrophy into the frontal lobe and there will be an increase in size of sulcus into the brain. Now, what does it mean? Decreased brain volume, larger lateral third ventricles, atrophy into the frontal lobe and increase in the size of sulci. So here we can see here decreased brain volume. So here we can see into the pic that how the brain volume is being decreased. In simple uh, words, what we can say, I will give you one example. We go into the market and if we uh, buy one cabbage, okay. So instead of keeping this cabbage into the refrigerator, this cabbage should be kept onto the dining table. And after four to five days, if we come and observe the same cabbage, there you will be able to find out the cabbage was the how the at the time of uh, the first day cabbage was fully good, but now the cabbage is being shrunken. It is fluffy. Similarly, here also the brains of the schizophrenic patients, here we can say the brain volume is being shrunken, the size it will it will it will decrease, it will shrunk. Then larger lateral third ventricles here, the prominent ventricles will be visible. Why? Because of the decreased brain volume. It's quite common. If the if the brain is it is being shrunken, of course the ventricles, the veins, the capillaries will be prominently visible. Then atrophy to the frontal lobe. It's quite common. And here we can see increase in the size of sulci. The, the zigzag lines which you are able to see, these are the larger lateral, sorry, uh, the size of sulci are being increased. It will be prominent because of the first step which uh, we have discussed that is uh, decreased brain volume. Then the next etiological factor is genetic theories. It's very common in all psychiatric disorders. In short, we can see hereditary. Transfer from one generation to another generation is quite common. And another one aspect related to this genetic theories is the people or the children, those who are born from the consanguineous marriage, the marriage in between the blood relationships. Okay, so the children or the people, those who are born from the consanguineous marriage, are at high risk to have such kind of psychiatric disorders that is nothing but the schizophrenia. Then, yes, related to the pregnant woman, prenatal risk factors. If a pregnant woman into her uh, first trimester or if we say in second trimester, if she has been exposed to any kind of maternal influenza, any kind of infectious agents, especially this maternal influenza, if she has been suffering with certain kind of maternal influenza and if it has been not cured at the given time, of course. The upcoming baby will have certain psychiatric symptoms. Then, burn during late winters or early springs. Most probably, yes, of course, the environmental conditions also matters. Because, see, you and me, we the normally healthy individuals. Uh, if we compare ourselves into the all environmental factors, see, during winter season, the environment is fully cloudy. There is no uh, bright sun rays. Okay, during that time we also experience certain dull like behavior. Similarly, here also certain hypothesis or certain studies they have said like the children, those who are uh, born from uh, during the late winters and in the early springs, they are at higher risk to have certain psychological problems. Then, of course, complications during the pregnancy or during the labor and delivery. Yes, like for example, we can say complications during pregnancy, we can say eclampsia, preeclampsia or we can say pregnancy induced hypertension might cause a tremendous amount of uh, abnormalities. Then during delivery time, at the time of the baby who is coming to the external world, during that time if a baby is having certain complications to come out. So here, sorry, so here the 
doctors they will try to they will help the baby to come out with the help of the instrumental deliveries or with the help of the uh, vacuum delivery so this what happens of course the instrumental delivery the forceps delivery the pressure is been applied towards the uh, fetus skull and the if if in short if the more force is been applied then of course there will be a chances of getting damage to the uh, neonates uh, skull or we can say to the brain so it may lead to certain uh, further complications also then psychodynamic theories here we can say uh, according to sigmoid flew according to sigmoid flew what he has said you at the time of the uh, oral stage if the oral stage of the neonates or we can say the newborn baby if the oral stages are not been fulfilled then of course such children or the such babies will land up into their late adulthood with some or other kind of psychiatric disorders then family theories yes of course here we have said mother child relationship it plays it is very important aspect mother child relationship the physical bonding like we can say the kangaroo mother care the physical contact of the newborn baby towards his mother it also emphasizes it also helps in growth and development of the child also the emotional bonding it plays a very important role the emotional bonding in between the mother and child it helps in nourishing it helps in uh, proper growth and development of a child so the mother child relationship like for example in certain cases during pregnancy or due to any circumstances if a mother is been expired though the father is present but the actual love how the mother is going to provide for a child the father is not able to fulfill that's why the mother and child relationship plays a very important role in developing and enhancing the proper growth and development of the child then moving towards the dysfunctional family system of course now at uh, if we see into the modern eras hmm? uh, if we see into the metro cities everyone are behind money okay so no one is there to look after their small kids uh, they will just hire uh, maid she will look after their kids just to gain the money she will fulfill uh, the child's needs but if we compare the fulfilling the child's needs by the mother and fulfilling the child's need by the maid it is totally it has a very vast difference so dysfunctional family system in another aspects we can also say conflicts between family members in front of the children especially the the quarrels between the mother and father though the child is sitting in front of them the mother and uh, sorry the mother and father they are continuously having conflicts then double blind communication yes double blind communication like for example if a five years old kid still he has not uh, started to learn much more things during that time if a parents or any 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 relatives if they are communicating in a double blind way okay like at that time they are they are commanding him from the both the ways then of course the child will be in the child will be into the confusing manner if this double blind communication into if, if it is got goes continuously continuously bombarding then of course the cognitive skills will be hampered and may lead to the schizophrenia then yes vulnerability stress model it's quite common the stress the stress factors is the commonest factor among all the psychiatric disorders we must we have also experience if we have a lot amount of stress and if you are not at iron and if we are not able to cope on that stressful events or stressful situations or stressful workload then of course we will be also suffering sir we will be also at high risk to have certain kind of psychiatric disorders but no our will power our cognitive skills are uh, intact that's why we are able to cope with such stressful e uh, events but here the patients those who are not able to those who are not having certain coping mechanisms or coping abilities of course they will fail and they will be led up into certain major psychiatric disorders social factors yes 
this social factor this we can say into the rural areas into the golden periods what used to happen here if for any kind of individual who has been isolated from the entire community then that individual will be suffering with some psychiatric illnesses why because no one is no one is there to communicate with him he is not able to share his feelings with anyone he is being totally isolated with all the aspects okay like for uh, family gatherings social gatherings uh, any kind of gatherings he is been totally isolated so the social factors it was there but we can say somewhat here into the modern era the social factor has been uh, means it is been slightly decreasing fine now moving towards the clinical features so clinical features are what we can say the symptoms may appear suddenly or develop gradually over time huh? like if a schizophrenic patient or uh, the normal healthy individual who is been free from any kind of disease and immediately is uh, we can see that something is wrong in the individual who was uh, living with us okay so the symptoms will we appear suddenly within a fraction of seconds we can say are uh, yesterday he was quite fine and what had happened today so suddenly appearance of symptoms or we can say the symptoms may develop gradually step by step the symptoms will get worse then the tension the ability to concentrate insomnia withdrawal or cognitive defects may precede the first psychotic episode yes tension that is of course the stress continuously bombarding of stress in our day to day activities that is nothing but the tension is the ability to concentrate okay because of the stressful event because of the extreme workload the, the individual is not able to concentrate in his daily activities in ability to concentrate insomnia of course during the the same individual if after the work he goes into his room or into his residence area he lies on to the bed but lack of sleep no no proper sleep or we can say sleep cycles are been totally disturbed then withdrawal or cognitive deficits these all may these are all the precise or we can see these are the warning signs of this schizophrenic disorder then we can say bluer four a's iguan bluer this iguan bluer he himself has introduced this schizophrenia and he himself has given certain symptoms related to uh, the name was given by uh, uh, by iguan bluer himself the four a's so which of those four a's first one is affective disturbance now what is this affective disturbance here we can see mood and affect here in uh, in uh, mental status examination the component is we are having that is mood and affect so if the mood is not appropriate to affect it will be easily identifiable so here what they have said the emotional responses of the patient how the emotional responses will be it might be blunt or it might be flat blunt no any response whatsoever you do in front of that patient if you give a cheerful environment in front of the patient the emotions will be totally blank no have no either the signs of happiness or no any signs of sadness similarly flat and blunt and happen both are same then moving towards the next uh, a is the thing but of artistic thinking now what is this artistic thinking here the individual With who, which kind of individual? The patient, those who are suffering from the schizophrenia, his autistic thinking is been totally disturbed. What do we mean by autistic thinking? In definition only, we have seen disturbances in thinking. That's why here the patient is unable to relate with the surrounding environment. Here they have said unable to relate, unable to relate towards others as well as to the surrounding nearby environment. of course the definition it gives us the clear idea that the patient's cognitive skills are being totally disturbed so how the how that patient will be able to think properly that's why the autistic thinking they have said the patient's thinking is been totally unrelated towards the others towards the certain environment then ambivalence third a is ambivalence ambivalence here what they have said it refers to contradictory or opposing emotions previously we have seen here in affective disturbances that the emotions were totally blunt 
Okay, means there there, there was no any response. If as I have told you, if we if we create a cheerful environment in front of the patient, no any response, no any signs of happiness, no any signs signs of sadness. Then ambivalence, what it says, yes, there are certain signs of emotions, but those are totally opposite. Here they have said opposing emotions, totally opposite. Like for example. In the situation where we are supposed to laugh, there the psychiatric, the schizophrenic patient will cry. Where we are supposed to cry, there the schizophrenic patient will laugh. That is nothing but the opposing emotions, opposite emotions. Then associative looseness. Fourth A is associative looseness. Associative looseness, logical thinking, abstract thinking, totally disturbed. They are unable to think logically. Then, next symptoms we can see here, Schneider's first rank symptoms. So, we, what are those? So here we will see, hearing one's thoughts spoken aloud. That is nothing but the audible thoughts or thought ego. Here what happens, the schizophrenic patient, he himself is able to hear his own thoughts which are going in his mind. He is able to hear the thoughts, whatever the thoughts they are going into his mind. The, the, those thoughts are being spoken aloud by some another person. That is nothing but uh, in psychiatric terminology we say it is an hallucinatory voices. There we will see one by one. Yes, the second point we have said hallucinatory voices. Hallucinatory voices in the form of statements. Okay, statements like how these statements are been written. Okay, hallucinatory voices in the form of commentary, in the form of statements. Okay, in the form of statements, such kind of voices are been able to hear by the second schizophrenic patient. Next hallucinatory voice. Yes, there is another one hallucinatory voice, but in the form of running commentary. Running commentary, all, all are very familiar. The running commentary has been uh, most probably seen into the, uh, the IPL matches, the cricket matches, how the commenters they comment. Okay, so similarly, same voices are be able to hear by such schizophrenic patients. Then, thought withdrawal. Thought withdrawal. Here, the schizophrenic patient, he says or he verbalizes that my own thoughts which I am thinking are being removed by certain external force. This is nothing but the thought withdrawal where the schizophrenic patient is been experiencing. Then thought insertion, opposite to the withdrawal, vice versa. Withdrawal to remove, insertion, now here the schizophrenic patient he is saying or he is verbalizing, yes, doctor, someone is trying to insert their thoughts into my mind. That is nothing but the thought insertion. Then thought broadcasting, of course, broadcast. The first we have seen the withdrawal to remove, second one was insertion, trying to insert someone. Now the patient's own thoughts are being broadcasting. He, 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 he verbalizes that doctor, I am I'm, I'm, I'm able to catch my thoughts but they are esc escaping. The thoughts are broadcasting. Then delusional perceptions, there we will see in detail one by one. Then somatic passivity. Somatic passivity here they have said body, bodily sensations especially sensory symptoms are experienced as imposed on body by some external forces. Hmm? This is also one type of an uh, hallucinatory like tactile hallucination. Okay, now here uh, the patient will verbalize in, in certain way like doctor, someone is coming and touching towards my back. Someone is coming and rubbing his hand towards my uh, shoulder. Okay, the similarly way the patient will verbalize this, that is nothing but the somatic passivity. Someone, the external forces is trying to touch him. Then, made volitions. Made volitions, here we can say, one own acts are experienced as being under the control of some external force, the subject being like a robot. Okay, made volitions. The best example, uh, before, uh, uh, six to seven years ago, there was a uh, video game which was very highly, um, what to say, it was very highly played by each and every youngsters, the, that is uh, Blue Whale, okay. The end, end uh, uh, what was it in Blue Whale, there were certain
certain steps there were certain uh, episodes if we go into the higher steps the who was handling the gamer he used to give commands to the players yes now you have completed your first stage now go towards your uh, first floor second floor third floor of the building now you are at the top floor now i i command you to jump from the top floor this is nothing but the maid violations or acts means the schizophrenic patient he is he will verbalize yes doctor someone is controlling my activities i am talking but my i myself i am not working some external force is trying to walk me this is nothing but the maid violations then maid impulses here we can say the impulses are being imposed by same uh, by the external forces and maid feelings or affect just yes, the emotions here the patient will experience like his own emotions are being under the control of the external forces then next we can see here the clinical features which are been distributed among the positive symptoms as well as the negative symptoms so what are the positive symptoms yes delusions hallucinations excitement or agitation or neuronia that is inability to experience pleasure if at all these all four symptoms are been present into this uh, into the patient then only we can say yes that patient is suffering from the schizophrenia then negative symptoms is like like all negative is like affective flatter or blending emotions as i have told no any uh, symptoms of emotions aversion like lack of initiative initially he was taking initiative in, in certain activities but nowadays he is totally uh, apathy then attentional impairment of course the cognitive skills are being totally lost the loss you know, the loss of concentration will be also impaired and allergia that is lack of speech output of course social withdrawal the definitionally we have said uh, disturbances in thinking emotions uh, and the patient is totally isolated socially withdrawal okay so the lack of speech is if, if the individual is living alone who is no, no one is there to speak with him then of course the lack of there will be a lack of speech output in such schizophrenic patients now we will see certain types of schizophrenia so here we can see paranoid hemiphrenic catatonic residual and differentiated simple and post schizophrenic depression fine so we will see one by one what all these means paranoid schizophrenia so the word paranoid itself says the paranoid means delusion now what is this delusion in psychiatric terminology the definition of delusion it says it is a false fixed firm unshakable belief okay where the schizophrenic patient is been experiencing okay so paranoid means delusion his beliefs are been totally false paranoid schizophrenia is present in the most common form of the schizophrenia okay in uh, introductory part as i have told you if you go and visit to any psychiatric hospital almost 50% of beds of that psychiatric hospital are been occupied by the schizophrenic patients and in schizophrenia the commonest type of schizophrenia is the paranoid that is nothing but the delusion so here in pink you can say the the schizophrenic patient is sitting into the corner and he is having certain false delusions is someone is trying and coming to kill him so what does it mean we will see one by one so first delusion is nothing but the delusion of persecution so what is this delusion of persecution this is all british language what they have said is the persecutory delusion individual believes that they are being uh, malevolently treated in some way frequent things includes being conspired against cheated speed upon followed poison or drug habits in short delusions of persecution what it says if a patient is suffering from the part with the paranoid schizophrenia and he is having a sign of delusions of persecution so what it means the patient verbalizes like doctor my own family members okay to see the family members who are those family members my own father is trying to kill me okay that means his belief is like what he will say 
he 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 believes that his own family members, the mother, close relatives, mother, father, brother, sister, or maybe husband or maybe wife, is trying to kill me by offering me a lunch or any kind of by offering a meal. They are trying to uh, insert certain poisonous chemicals into my food stuffs, and they are offering me to eat such poisonous food. So this is nothing but the delusions of persecution, where the psych uh, schizophrenic patient verbalizes, "My own family members are trying to kill me." This is the pick where you will be easily added, easily understood, uh, understand where the patient will be having such kind of. Uh, delusional activities next delusion is delusions of jealousy it's quite common most probably seen into the uh, females those who are gossip or those who are continuously gossiping okay so this delusions of jealousy here what happens here how the patient will verbalize is okay now the schizophrenic patient is walking into the uh, psychiatric ward and there are certain doctors and nurses they are discussing about their own case studies now what he will verbalize is doctor yesterday when your sisters were uh, were about to hear they were standing into the corner and they were discussing something about me okay that means the patient will have a false belief that if two if one or two people are standing and talking among their own here the patient will say or the patient will think that those two members are discussing something about me only this is nothing but the delusions of jealousy then next delusion is yes the common as the delusions of grandiose the delusions of grandiosity here what i have said uh, individuals with grandiose delusions have irrational ideas regarding uh, regarding their own worth talent knowledge or power they believe that they have a special relationship with famous persons or grandiose delusions of a religious nature may lead to assumptions of an identity of a great religious leader in short delusions of grandiosity means what here the patient will verbalize this like yes i have a close relationship with the prime minister like he will just say that he will directly say i have a close relationship with the famous film actor that is shahrukh khan or salman khan we are the close friend yesterday only we sat together and had a candlelight dinner so this is nothing but the delusions of grandiosity or they may also verbalize this they are having the schizophrenic patient those who are suffering with the delusions of grandiosity they may verbalize in certain way like i have a extra supernatural power if i jump from the fifth floor of the building nothing will happen to me so the delusions of grandiosity they are experiencing like they have a very close relationship with the famous personalities like actors actresses models the prime ministers okay or they will say they have extra supernatural powers here we can see uh, the delusions of grandiose fine then next is hallucinatory voices hallucinatory voices which are in the form of threaten or command the patient or uh, the uh, to the patient or auditory hallucinations without verbal form such as whistling humming and laughing most probably if you if you observe a schizophrenic patient the commonest commonest complaint yes someone is whistling someone is murmuring towards looking towards me okay that's in nothing but the hallucinatory voices all uh, the hallucinatory voices are of two types verbal and non verbal in verbal also they are of two types threatening or commanding type of hallucination threatening means someone is trying to uh, threaten me commanding yes mr x y z please come here walk from here you can uh, cut your hand okay means to give order to give command and uh, hallucinatory in the form of non verbal type like whistling laughing humming type of voices the patient will be experiencing then okay so this was related to the paranoid schizophrenia then next we will see hemiphrenic schizophrenia what this hemiphrenic schizophrenia means so here we can say it has an early 
and insidious onset and is often associated with poor premorbid personality hmm? how the symptoms are early and insidious okay and this premorbid personality has been also uh, it is been poor it has a poor premorbid personality so the essential features here we can say of course thought disorder of course the definition itself says disturbances in thinking okay the cognitive skills are been totally disturbed okay so, so the thought disorders there will be present incoherence there will be present severe loosening of association means there is no any uh, logical thinking there is no any uh, association in between the uh, their activities extreme social impairment yes uh, extreme social impairment we can say just in the definition we have seen uh social withdrawal then senseless giggling okay senseless giggling we i have a short short pics uh, then you will be able to identify mirror gray, uh, mirror gazing grimacing and mannerisms so what are these what are these we will see here we can say incoherence that is loosening of association jumping from one topic to another with no association so there is no any linkage between the phrases or topics or words simply the patient is verbalizing verbalizing talking and talking which has no any linkage between these sentences then social impairment of course see in pic we can see all the three four uh, individuals are uh, standing in a group discussing something chatting something but the schizophrenic patient is away from those four or five individuals sitting alone thinking of his or we can say uh, living in the world of fantasy senseless giggling without any reason okay see smiling laughing and giggling it has a, there are totally different smiling just to give a social smile laughing just uh, if, 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 if the jokes says are been cracked yes we explode our laugh giggling is nothing but simply kind of continuously laughing okay without any reason simply the patients are been giggling laughing aloud mirror gazing looking towards mirror having certain impulsive activities grimacing yes grimacing okay that means performing certain like uh, certain activities which are unrelated mannerisms here we can say a habitual gesture or a way of speaking or behaving uh, we we see certain individuals they have certain habits or we can say certain activities will while perform uh, uh, while speaking then catatonic schizophrenia yes kata means disturb it is been totally disturbed which is characterized by marked disturbances in motor activities okay it includes two types catatonic stupor and catatonic excitement now what this means in short i will see i will tell you the catatonic excitement here the patient will have increased psychomotor activity okay excitement excited activities the patient will be performing okay which will be ranging from the restlessness agitation excitement aggressiveness to the time at the violent behavior so this much the uh, uh, the psychomotor activity will be increased then there will be also increase in the speech production and loosening of association then uh, clinical features of catatonic stupor okay now this is vice versa towards the excitement and stupor so here in stupor what we can say here the patient will be totally mute in excitement the speech production was loud but here now the speech is totally mute the patient will be in rigid manner that is maintenance of rigid posture against effortless to be moved okay patient will remain in same position if we try to move him the patient will not at all move then negativism doing just an opposite posturing stupor echolalia echopraxia vaxiflexibility and automatic obedience echolalia that is repetition of words echopraxia that is repetition of the same activities and vaxi vaxiflexibility means in what here the patient will perform the patient will be remain in certain odd or bizarre position which uh, which is been flexible okay and he will remain in same position for many uh, time then residual schizophrenia here we can say the symptoms of residual schizophrenia we can see emotional blunting as we have seen no any emotions 
illogical thinking of course the abstract thinking is been totally disturbed social withdrawal of course the definition itself says the patient is totally social withdrawal and they a uh, year also residual schizophrenia we can say there is a loosening of association then undifferentiated schizophrenia here we cannot differentiate that the patient is having symptoms of paranoid or the patient is having the symptoms of uh, like uh, catatonic stupor or catatonic excitement okay that's why the word they have said undifferentiated we cannot differentiate the patient will have mixed type of symptoms simple schizophrenia like the symptoms will be having the negative symptoms as we have, we have we have seen the positive and negative symptoms then vague hypochondriac features like the patient will verbalize like yes something is wrong with my body organs though we have gone through under medical investigations but all the investigations are quite fine but then also the patient will uh, verbalize something is wrong in my uh, body changes then wandering tendency of course the wanderers who are roaming on the roads on the footpaths the same tendency will be having with the patients those who are suffering from this sch simple schizophrenia and aimless activities any kind of activities they will perform which are very harmful but though it, it does not have any kind of aims or objectives then post schizophrenic depression the word itself says or it the word itself gives us an answer after schizophrenia the patient will end up into the depression that is post schizophrenic depression then how to diagnose such kind of schizophrenia first and most important thing is history collection of course then the mental exam the mental status examination rule out certain physical disorders official diagnosis will be based on the icd 10 ct scans and mri then the treatment treatment modalities here we can say first and most important thing important thing is psychopharmacotherapy the choice of drug to treat schizophrenia is nothing but the antipsychotics here that is the certain range that is chlorpromazine it, it, it will be given uh, like 300 to 1500 mg per day and haloperidol like for 5 to 100 mg per day there are some, there are many more uh, antipsychotic drugs like risperidone rosapine and so on then yes ecd ecd plays a very important role among all the psychiatric disorders okay so electroconvulsive therapy it is a it is an important line of uh, treatment where the schizophrenia can be treated then of course certain therapies like group therapy behavioral therapy social skill training of course cognitive developmental therapy because your cognitive functions are totally disturbed as well as the family therapy then the uh, nursing management here we can say Uh, we are supposed to observe the behavior pattern, posture, psychomotor disturbances, appearance, and hygiene. Of course, the hygiene is been totally uh, the hygiene is been not maintained by the psychiatric patients because there is logical thinking, the cognitive functions are been totally disturbed. Then identify the type of disturbances the patient is experiencing. Ask the patient about feelings, wild thought, alterations, and evident. Note the effect and emotions, emotional tone. Assess for theme and content of delusional thinking. whatsoever like for example whosoever is been assigned into the psychiatric wards or into the psychiatric properties the nurse should have a optimum knowledge related to the psychiatric disorders especially the uh, schizophrenia then assess the speech pattern of the patient determine any suicidal intent or suicidal ideations or suicidal thoughts while uh, verbalizing with the patient thank you